Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm probably going to seem a little redundant, but I'm adding this at the beginning of the clip because this was originally the article that I had posted in LinkedIn, and credit goes out to Tim Wilson, Randy Switch, and Mark Edmondson because Mark Edmondson did the Google Analytics package, Randy Switch did the R-Site Catalyst package, and Tim Wilson's who I actually got the repository from as well. So I wanted to uh, make sure and make note of that because credit is earned where it is due. Um, make sure to watch um, the video the rest of the way though so I can give you a demo of it and show you where to get it from because I actually have forked the repository from um, Tim Wilson's uh, repo and got the uh, scripts in there. So if you want to, you want to go to my repository or his, doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the bottom, uh, but make sure to subscribe to my videos and uh, like them if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Found a way to compare Google and Adobe Analytics with R and so I basically downloaded the R scripts and added my, uh, my Google Analytics and my Adobe Analytics credentials. You need to have a Google Analytics um, you have to have like a, a developer um, key and project set up because when you use the Google Analytics package, it um, will basically run the requests against Mark Edmondson's account. Mark Edmondson is the package creator of the Google Analytics package that's on here. And so you actually have to um, add that while you're running these scripts because in the beginning you have to add it to make the requests and it uses your um, developer consoles, the API to transfer the data. So um, I just want to make sure you're aware of that uh, because I don't want him to get a bunch of requests and bog up his account. So anyways, also you have to have an Adobe Analytics client ID and client secret, which you can get from the um, user profile, which your administrator usually can get that for you. Um, I'm an administrator of our um, account. so. I have my own, um, but it used to be in the user profile section for everybody, and I don't know if there's a way to enable that, um, but you have to get it from your administrator if you can't find it. So without further ado, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is what it creates is right here. It's basically a chart, and it shows your, um, it'll show your visits, your sessions, same thing, but a visit in Adobe is a session in Google Analytics, or your visitor in uh, Google Analytics, or your new visitors, whatever. Um, I believe it's your users actually is the same thing as a unique visitor in um, Adobe Analytics versus Google Analytics. And so it'll compare basically that, your page views, your visit sessions, your orders, and your revenue, okay? Or your transactions in Google Analytics, orders in Adobe Analytics, okay? And I believe it's like transacted revenue or total transactions value, something like that in Google Analytics, but it's revenue in Adobe Analytics. So it can get confusing, but all this stuff is actually in the script to where you just have to get the API keys and you use them and it pulls the data and it injects it basically into a data frame. Um, it's all using RAM and your computer's processing power to pull it in and wrangle it and then create a couple of visualizations to compare against, which is really cool because you can take these graphs and you can actually save them and they're interactive to where you can do all kinds of things with them. You can like go like this, basically zoom in a little bit more. When you scroll over them, it shows you the values. Um, and the reason why it's got a weird date number is just because of the way that this R script is set up. But um, it's really cool because we actually uh, turned on Adobe Analytics around mid-August and you can see here where um, it started to normalize and actually uh, mimic or mirror Google Analytics. It's not the same. Um, I think there's probably some issues or was at the time with a certain page template and we had to investigate that uh, further but it was really cool because we were trying to look at our historical visits and figure out whether to use Adobe Analytics or Google Analytics and I ended up using both of them because I found in there that there were some months where Adobe Analytics had some issues and there were some tracking breaks and then on other months, Google Analytics had the same problem. So this audit helped a ton in trying to figure out which report suite or which tool to use for um, basically uh, establishing like our historical values and our uh, historical standards for our uh, data governance as far as our reporting and stuff when we were actually trying to use it to look at year over year and stuff like that. Um, so. It's a really cool tool, but in it, you can see here that it shows this graph, and then what it also does is it gives you a couple other charts that shows um, the variance, and this is a percent variance. You can see here that it was way off, like 100%, and then it was only about oh, six, 
about six percent on average it looks like that it, that it's that it's different once it started actually tracking when we had um, turned on Adobe Analytics and implemented it on the site um, and then you can see in here it's got a distribution chart like a meme distribution and you can see here um, that it goes through all the different um, metrics so this one here it looks like this is uh, this is visits and sessions so sessions in Google Analytics visits in Adobe Analytics and then it goes through revenue and orders and all the other ones but it basically plots all of these so you can take a quick snapshot and look at it, it only takes like I want to say it only takes like maybe three minutes to run these scripts which is super cool and then I went ahead and took it a step further there was an issue too where revenue wasn't even tracking and I found this out as well but I mean I didn't have to go and like dive in that's what that's what happened like there was other co-workers that were going in and diving in and looking at the actual reports and I was like what are you doing like let me run this and I ran this and I actually did this for 12 sites in less than an hour and it probably would have taken days to do it and so that just goes to show you the power of R and using programming languages to use the API connectors to get data um, because it's so much faster and so I, uh, I definitely don't like to do things um, inefficiently and repetitive. I will fight as much as I can to um, not do that and it's not because I want to avoid doing the work, it's because if there's a simpler way to do something and you can learn how to do it right the first time, I'd rather spend twice as much time learning how to do it right the first time so I don't have to spend just as much time every other time I have to go back and audit. So potentially this saved probably like 80% of the time. So. Anyways, enough philosophy there. Um, I added a little bit on the end here because what I wanted to do is I took all of the um, data and I had uh, exported it into spreadsheets and this was using the XLSX pa package um, in R. And so it basically took all the Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics data and then it also took the master data and it's actually putting it on different tabs, different sheets, and it's all in the same exact file. So really cool. Um, because I wanted to run it real quick and then get all the files and, or get all the data onto a file and then get all the visualizations and take a look. And so what I did was I just ran it simultaneously for each site and ran through all of them. And it took about 20 minutes for all 12 sites or whatever. And then went back and looked at the data and uh, then I was done. So it was really cool. And I just wanted to share this with you. Let me go find the repo real quick and pause this and then show you that and then um, you can go ahead and start doing it yourself if you want to with uh, R. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to show you actually before we do that is you can see in here in the script it tells you um, you want to insert your Adobe client ID here, insert your client secret, same thing, client ID, client secret, then your report suite ID you want to put right here, and then right here you put your Google Analytics view ID. And then the only other thing that you do is you go right here and you put your um, Adobe Analytics report suite ID right there and then your Google Analytics view ID again right there that's it and then really all you do is you run this and when you run it it's gonna generate all of these data frames and um, I don't know if you use um, system get and EMV but that basically hides your keys um, it's just a best practice for using um, RStudio or even other languages um, so if you do that probably a good idea especially if you're gonna be sharing your code um, or running it like on a server or something like that on a virtual machine um, and then basically uh, that's it so so what I did was I just went ahead and forked uh, the repository from github and you can see it all right here and the uh, scripts are in here. Everything pretty much is in here that you need to um, actually try out the uh, comparison. You can see it right here. This is um, exactly what we were just looking at. And then down here, it gives you a little bit more information. With uh, looks like he used Markdown for this, and it's a Markdown file. So that's it. Um, you guys go ahead and have fun with it. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the, in the section below. And thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my videos and like them. Appreciate it.